This is my new cinematic intro to my plein air painting experience on the east coast last week guys. So I made two paintings. Let's just let the cinematic intro, um, intro roll and I'll just tell you what I've done. I've done two paintings, um, two, two plein airs and I've time lapsed them both. So you're going to see one and then you'll see a second time lapse. Um, and, but anyway, look at this. This is Rao Kokiri on the east coast of the North Island of New Zealand. Um, here comes the Rao Kokiri Bridge. Um, oh, I just love that bridge. Isn't that awesome? Anyway, I love this place. Beautiful weather too. Oh, so this is the first. This is the first painting getting underway now. This is the first time lapse. But hang on, let's just pause that. Let's just pause that and I'll tell you what's going on. So, I've done that one that you're about to see now. i also done this one and one other but this is the other time lapse this one here finish this one this is a lot of studio painting actually as it turned out but anyway so two time lapses this one run through this one quite quickly then i'll spend longer explaining this one like i do um, and i know what you're saying is that is that a giant kite behind them and it is i had a hot new idea to make these videos more interesting and exciting for you guys and for me and i thought well on a shoestring budget i really couldn't afford a drone but i got these multi-camera angles are quite good and i thought well a third a drone angle but anyway can't afford a drone on my budget so i've got this kite idea which is actually working so like midway towards the video i'll show you how this kite idea works that's worth watching too actually but anyway let's get back to editing or voiceovering this little time lapse. So, um, yeah, I've already started there, guys. I put that sky in, and that sky was uh, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, uh, titanium white, probably adding a little bit of a touch of cadmium orange there just to um, gray it down because it was starting to go a little bit gray down there on the east coast by now. Um, the clouds going with obviously titanium white, and it was a bit of phthalo blue uh, mixed with a little bit of cadmium orange and white to make that gray. Um, okay, so, and of course you saw me masking tape that, those mountains up just to make it really easy to keep those nice crisp lines now to come back on and um, place those mountains and um, flashing up now is the palette that I'm using. Um, same palette I've, I'm always using, I don't change, so that's it there. Titanium white, cadmium yellow pale, cadmium orange, red matter, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Yeah, so that's the one I use guys, I just don't change. Um, and yet to find a colour in the natural world um, that has stumped me yet, but every other otherwise I uh, managed to um, get by on just those colours. And you know, mixing's just, like for me, mixing's really fun. It's a fun thing, and I don't know if I've done mixing in other videos, and I'll do more mixing videos, but um, I think it's just something that comes down to practice. It really is just practice. Uh, yeah, so, just now working forward, working from the distance into the foreground. That's just the way I work, what works for me. And so I, I sort of block in those main mountain shapes. You know, the, the distant mountains are obviously lighter and less intense in color, so less saturated. And things get more saturated, more intense in color, and darker as they come forward, generally. That's how it generally works. And now I'm starting to put some, just really quickly, really just putting some well, with some grassy hills and some rock faces and some um, bush, some forest on those hills. I'm watching this with you guys for the probably, you know, first time. <laughs> and uh, here we come into the um, foreground now. By the way, at some stage, at some stage it does start raining, um, which is kind of weird. Um, so it started raining and someone had dropped me off. Um, so I was stuck there anyway. So that was good because I just worked through the rain. I'm not sure you're going to see the rain on the video, but incidentally, um, with oil paint, it all just beaded up on the surface, and then it just, um, obviously, it just all dried up, and I can't even see where it was, so perhaps you can paint in the rain. Um, not sure whether I recommend it. But anyway, here we're coming forward. Um, all those greens, or those darks I'm mixing up, guys, are just with um, ultramarine blue and burnt umber. That's how I make, that's how I make my black, basically, out of this... Um, palette so, so obviously if I'm mixing it um, to make a grey I'm using the ultramarine blue burnt umber again with some titanium white but yeah coming forward the greens are obviously um, blue and yellow and but that's uh, the ultramarine blue 
and the um, cadmium yellow. Generally, generally there is there is a time, and there's a time here where I will actually use the phthalo blue to mix a um, green. Anyway, we'll talk about that as it, as it happens. But um, yeah, those greens, um, and then I just dull them off with a, generally a little bit of orange, because the ultramarine blue and the cadmium yellow is it does make quite a bright green to be fair too bright than I actually need especially in the distance so I'm just dulling that off with a little bit of either orange or you know another trick is just I already had a gray made up which I use for my mountains let's just add a bit of gray to it and that'll also take the intensity out of your green you know there's, there's more than one way is what I'm saying um, there's some cabbage trees in the front um, I might have to just quickly because I said I was going to tell you in the phthalo blue phthalo blue and cadmium yellow pale make a very, very bright green. And if you lean it more blue, you get more of a turquoise viridian color. But if you lean it more yellow, you'll get this bright, bright green, which I've got a little bit in this foreground um, pasture. The old farm, farm grass is there, pasture. <laughs> anyway, those cabbage trees, they're a real mission to paint wet on wet. I'm gonna back, come back once, once this is dry in the studio and finish those cabbage trees off. They were hard work, actually. But um, that's how it comes together. A few shadows in there. Shadows are always good. Um, always look for some shadows when you're going out, I reckon, because um, they sort of make a painting. But yeah, that's how it happened. Right, just, uh, we'll just press stop there, guys. Pause. Um, so while you're watching that, I've actually also been uh, multitasking because I'm finishing this one here off. This is the next time lapse. And um, I'm just doing this little shingle bank in here. Interestingly, um, I'll just quickly, just tapping that shingle on with the end of the pellet knife. So just working through that, multitasking. Anyway, uh, what I was gonna show you was this kite idea. Um, this is a cracker. Um, a little video of the very first, the first uh, test run on the kite drone. So anyway, I'll play that now. So I'm gonna make a longer video of this, but essentially that's got an old, an old phone of mine um, going up, hanging beneath the kite. Um, what a fantastic idea though. There it is. That's, I think they call that Kiwi ingenuity. But anyway, uh, more of this to come. This was, I, I wanted to show you this just to break up the videos. Um, before the next time lapse and um, look at that isn't that god and look at the look at the footage look at that like a bit shaky to be fair but it will get um uh, like the mark ii model be a massive improvement anyway um here we go on that next time lapse, time lapse i think um away we go yeah so um hey this is the second one um, it's a completely different scene um you'll see that as it develops but um in a really really clouded and gray day just um Nothing exciting happening in the sky at all. Just uh, so I mix up a very, very light grey with that um, burnt umber, uh, ultramarine blue, and a lot of titanium white, just to make a very, very, um, you know, just light, light grey. And now, now this is a different landscape. So I said, I just said that I work from um, furthest away to closest, and now you see me doing something completely different. So you'll see it as it develops, different scene, and approaching it a little bit differently. So putting some of my darks in first, just going and whacking all those darks in. And now putting that tree foliage in. That brush there is a synthetic flat brush, about a three quarter inch one, that's actually really, really worn out. And can you see I'm just dabbing? I'm just dabbing that brush to create the foliage of those trees. It's a handy little technique. And then coming by with a hog bristle filbert. A hog bristle filbert that, um, I'll put the type of brushes in the comments below actually. Um, but there's a whole bristle filbert and that just creates that foliage and once again it's just a little dabbing, dabbing technique. And now coming through with these um, greens. So like I say, no great highlights on the landscape, um, just a very clouded in day, but I thought, you know, let's try and find a bit of beauty within that, you know, um, and plus I really wanted to go painting. Um, so just go and find something and um, see what I can make of it. We'll just paint what's there. It was pretty. But anyway, um, the green's going in, um, obviously cadmium yellow, pale ultramarine blue um, with a bit of uh, cadmium orange in there just to turn them a little bit orange. You can see the ones in the back, the, the back right hand side have got more orange in 
and some of these other ones. And obviously um, when I'm mixing those greens guys, it's also getting white in there too. So I don't even quite delight in it. Now, there was a stream. So the stream was what made this pretty. This is the feature of this whole painting. And this is like, um, it must be a sheep station. It was just off the side of the road. Um, and incidentally, I went down and I started, I sketched this scene in. I, I set up to sketch on the side, off the side of the road, but it started raining, so I just came back to where I was staying and started painting this on the porch down there. Um, so that's where you've seen this being painted. Um, so it's not really plain air at all, but I did initially try to plain air, um, but it was, yeah, I wasn't going to paint this in the rain. It was quite heavy rain by now. Um, yeah, so the stream, really pretty stream, just, um, man, I'm just, re it's the same colours over and over again, just different um, quantities. So that stream is just a repeat of the sky with a little bit more blue in it. Um, and I was just matching that. By now, I, I was just working off the photo on my phone, to be honest. That's all I had. So um, just matching those colours from the phone, really, and my knowledge, really, knowledge of what the landscape looks like. So an old uh, no, a sheep station. So the sheep really mow that grass down perfectly, and I, I like that about a sheep station. You know, that's um, it's much prettier than a than cattle. You know, cattle leave those tufts, and and you know, there's tufts there everywhere. A little bit more character, but the sheep's just you know, it's, it's just nice. And um, these little streams, sometimes the grass grows down right down to the edge, basically grows into the water, and then sometimes it scours out around the edge when the rain comes by. So there's a mix of that, you know scoured out and grass right down to the edge. Oh, it's, it's just beautiful. And a little bull rushes around, yet to come back to them. So, you just saw the change in colour. This is me now back in my studio, back in uh, Papamoa here, painting from here on in. Um, so it really is a studio painting now. But, um, and putting those grasses then on, it's a mix of just synthetic flat brushes. So I've got a synthetic flat brush there right then. And then sometimes, just um, hog bristle, hog bristle flat brushes. It's just the lights and darks. Lights and darks. Sorry guys, I'm just watching this too, watching what I've done. Um, come back with the darks, burnt, quite burnt umbery. Burnt Humbering Ultramarine Blue. I find the whole bristle brush is really good for those um, random brush strokes. That's why I like to use them. And you know, just, you see it's kind of a random technique really, which I use. And when I start doing these bull rushes, then I'll use the um, whole bristle fan brush. Now there is something there's a probably a there's a top tip in this painting. There is a top tip because um, the photo's got something completely different into different to what to how my painting ends up. So I'll flash the photo up actually at some stage. At the end, I'll put the photo up so you can see the difference between the painting and the photo. Because um, I don't go for a lot of the artist license, but um, every now and again you do need it. And in this case, you'll see how it goes. So here I'm starting now. There was a little island in the middle of the stream. An island in the stream. <laughs> I won't, yeah, I won't sing. Um, so I start to put this island in and I get quite far. Bearing in mind, so I done this in um, two days this painting. So the underpainting, the stuff I painted down the coast, that was already bone dry. So now I started to put that stream in and carried on happily painting. It just the reflection's always cool. When you put that reflection in, just um, it's like the poor cousin to the real thing. So you just make the, um, when I say the poor cousin, um, so the reflection's less saturated than the real thing, the colors are less intense, the darks aren't as dark, the lights aren't as light. Um, as a rule, that's a real general rule of painting a reflection. And then you're just um, transferring the image, you know, the mirror image below it. But you. We'll talk more about reflections in another video, I'm sure, you know. I, the good thing about doing these videos, doing these time lapses and um, talking through them, is I get a whole, lot, a whole lot of more ideas, a whole lot more ideas of things that I can um, make a video out of.
but this is a real broad range just to um, explain a few things as I go um, what I'm painting what I'm doing and you can see it's not too planned as, as it goes along I haven't really thought this out too much it's just um, but hey you know it's, it's good because you see things like this little island that's going to um, soon disappear probably I've said too much already but that's that little track on the left there love that little track Yeah, it is quite a, um, a technique where I go back and forth just creating those little ruts and, and cutouts in the grass and those little shadows that create the farmland look. Then I go too far, like right now I've gone too far with the darks and it looks like it's, you know, it looks a bit illustrated so I have to come back with the lights or, you know. You're always just trying to, um, well I'm just trying to make it, you know, don't push it too far but push it far enough that it looks realistic. But I like lights and darks, so I, I do emphasise the lights and darks a little bit in the landscape, even on a day like today where it's completely clouded in, and there wasn't a whole lot of um, bright um, highlights. So yeah, there you see me doing those bull rushes with the fan brush, and um, incidentally, this is one occasion where I come back with a. Um, number one sable rigger and I actually put some individual reeds in which I don't really do that often you know it's me doing that now putting individual reeds in that's not really my game but you know in this case I thought you know it's really up in the foreground and it could benefit from some individual reeds um, so I spent a bit of time doing that but you yeah, normally I just sort of flip the fan brush or else I just um, use the edge of the palette knife the very razor edge of the palette knife just to create the odd reed but the only thing with the palette knife is you get very very straight reeds you know they're just very very straight which is um it's okay but sometimes i think you need some variation which that's the sable rigger does a better job of that of creating some variation to your reeds but yeah so i was struggling i'm going to be real honest i was struggling in this bottom um bottom right hand corner here with that little island um, there was a shingle bank. The photo was completely different, but I didn't want to paint what was in the photo. Um, when you see the photo, you'll see why. But the island, the island was there, so I thought, oh, I've got to put the island in. Oh, ex now what I'm doing there is painting the sky again, because in transport, when I transported that back from the coast, it was still wet, because the, the lighter colours take longer to dry and like a very white sky takes days to dry even using because i'm using laquin as my medium even using laquin it still takes a long time to dry so i got some in short i got some some dust and stuff in my sky so i just um sanded that off with some once it was dry i just used some very very fine steel wool this is actually a top tip if you do get dust or something in your painting or brush hairs that you don't want there um, just let it dry let it but dry completely and then come back go to the hardware store and get some very very fine steel wool that you buy in the paint department and you use that steel wool you can just lightly lightly brush your painting in those whatever those foreign objects should come out of your paint layer without disturbing your paint layer too much fine steel wool from your Bunnings or your Mitre 10 hardware department or paint department yeah Ah, there we go. Look at that. So, I went inside, had a cup of tea, came back out with some fresh eyes after the cup of tea, and thought, no, that island has to go. It's no good. So, it looked better before the island was there, and I think it already looks better now, but I had a plan. I had a plan. But the thing was, if you're beginning, if you're learning, and this is, it's really good for learning, and I don't get into wiping paint off too much, um, now but in that case I did so if you do your underpainting is bone dry you can actually wipe the fresh paint that's still wet off and to be honest I use a little bit of solvent to wipe that off but I often use I often just use pure Lequin just on like a t-shirt material rag I find if I use Lequin it doesn't really damage upset the paint layer below it too much it will always lighten off a little bit I think whenever you wipe paint off it lightens the pigments beneath 
a little bit, but hey, you know, sometimes you've got to do it. And particularly when you're learning, because you know, that's, you get another go, don't you? You know, you get it, let it dry, then come back if you're putting a tree on. If you don't get the tree rock quite right, you can wipe it off and have another go. You get another turn. So that's one of the beauty things about oil paint. So now working on that reflection again, so you might not get it all on the first go. Um, but you see I've pulled down those long reflections. I kind of like sort of long reflections, even though I couldn't get carried away here because it's um, it wouldn't look realistic. But yeah, just um, moving around. Moving around. You're about to, we're about to go into the stuff that you just saw me doing just now. I've got to tack that on. I've got to stop doing this voiceover, tack that on, and then, yeah, starting to put that shingle bank in. That's the shingle with this. It's, now, that's the same brush I use to do the, um, to do the distant trees with, what I um, block that shingle bank in with. That brush right there. And I'm just, once again, because it's splayed out, and it makes those nice little random shapes that, I, that are unpredictable for the um, stream edge. And that's tapping, tapping that palette knife. I don't think you could see it very good when I showed you, but that's me tapping the palette knife there right now. Right guys, uh, that's how I finished up. Um, there it is. Um, hey, and actually not ruling out that I might do a little bit of extra stuff on this now, but it'll only be a little subtle, maybe um, finding some of the grasses, some of the um, water edge. But anyway, you'll see the finished work on my Instagram or Facebook page, Wayne Vickers Artist. But right now, in front of me here, I have got the image of this um, versus the scene photo. So I'll flash it up for you right now. And so you can see that now, you can see the artist license, particularly down in the bottom right hand corner where that little island was and that shingle bank. Um, you can see I've changed that in my painting and to be honest, biased, I like what I've done better than what was there. And halfway up on the right hand side you can see I've left some trees out. Uh, I didn't put those sheep up on the um, right hand corner because I thought they were just distracting. Um, but anyway, that's Artist License. Don't know how you feel about it. I don't use it a lot. I try and keep things fairly representational. Um, but in this case, you see what I've done there as opposed to what's here. Um, yeah. So. Now, I was going to show you some brushes quickly, very quickly, because, hey, this has gone on for, like, blooming over half an hour. Uh, congratulations if you sat through all of that or you watched in a couple of three goes or something. This is that synthetic flat brush. It's all worn out, but I can tell you it is a DAS, DAS one-stroke Taclon synthetic brush, and it's, um, that's what happens. It splays out after a few years, and this is really good. This is when I was doing the foliage against the sky on those trees. The other brush... This one here, once again, it's a bit worn out, but this is a Rosemary, oh no, it's a Rosemary, this is a Raphael Paris Classic 3577, and this is a um, short filbert. Um, so I'll put these down in the comment section below, but a short filbert brush, I use that for my distant foliage on the trees. The Rosemary brush was this one here, was the ultimate um, long flat. So these are just hog head long flat brushes that I use and the other one is just those synthetic flats they're just cheap um, nothing special about them synthetic flat brushes good for putting paint on but like I said I like the um, bristle brushes for actually making interesting paint marks that represent um, things like grasses and trees yeah so there we go um, remember to like and subscribe if you manage to sit through all of this um, I'm going to do some more videos um, and get that kite out that'll be interesting but uh, anyway uh, yeah, I'm going to talk more about techniques and um, paint mixing, things like that, you know. It's, but it's good to see the method, how these things evolve. Anyway, cheers for watching. Um, Till next time.